Hey guys, today I am here with my friend Richard. He is a wheelchair user and he has challenged me to go out with him today and experience some of the accessibility challenges that wheelchair users have. <gasps> oh, <my God. laughs> oh. Obviously, as a person with a disability, there's a lot more to it than just accessibility, but today we're gonna focus on access because that's kind of like one of the more forefront things on our minds. We're actually going to be more than just getting him in the chair, we're gonna be taping his legs together. So if there's ever a time when he's gonna like tip or fall, he can't reactionarily stick out his feet to catch him, he can't jump out of the chair. We are gonna try and cruise down to the beach and see what happens. I'm super curious because obviously this is a whole world that I don't know about and I'm sure a lot of you at home don't know some of the day-to-day -day challenges so let's, go, let's do it, let's go. Make it happen. All right, so we're coming up to our very first challenge. We have to have to go through our Airbnb to get out to the street and there's a threshold here so we're gonna see okay. what we can actually do about that. I'm worried about hitting my hands on the side of the door frame. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. All right, gosh. so... If, I guess I can use these to guide you, you can, right? You can pull your way through, yeah. Okay. First of school done. <laughs> All right, now we've got another threshold going out, and that's a little bit more sketchy. So. Oh, I'm terrified. So what, are oh. we, what are we doing here? I'm just gonna try and. No. Oh, oh, I think I got it. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was not ready for that. First thing first. All right, hang on. I'll go ahead and push up, and I'll, I'll pull back. Okay. Oh my gosh, I was not ready for the tip. Uh, okay. So the tape is working. Yeah. Now try to push your way forward while in a wheelie. Can you do it? There you go. One more time. Ah, ah, ah. Graze my hand on the brake. Ah. Hey, when I push my hands forward, it just gra I just sl slice my hand open. Wow. <laughs> Look how injured I'm already. I've got like. I'm an experienced wheelchair user. I have almost 10 years experience, and I'm going to demonstrate what I was trying to help get him to do. So I simply just pop up into a wheelie. Yeah. And then when I'm in a wheelie, I'll push my way through. Oh, and you and stay just, in the wheelie. Yeah, you stay in the wheelie. I just go on through. So now that we've kind of experienced some threshold terror, um, he's going to do the smart thing to do, and is try to avoid any extra obstacles if Ooh. necessary. There's other things we have to deal with that are not just accessibility, mm -hmm. and one of those is skin integrity. Um, since we can't really feel the bottoms of our butt. When you've been sitting long enough, you yeah. fidget. You go, oh man, yeah, it, yeah. Man, it hurts. Well, we don't get that sensation or that signal. So what can happen is uh, we sit on something too long, and it cuts off circulation to our skin and kills our skin. So I mean, is that like sore? Is that the same as like a bed sore? Or? Same idea, and it can legitimately actually kill you. Oh, um, like of infections. It stuff. can get an infection and get into your blood, and then you can go septic. Oh, we got a bit of downhill. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Just lean back a little bit. That puts less weight right on your front, front wheels because yeah. your front wheels will launch it forward. So. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yep, there you go. It's a lot to take in. It's like um, having, to, yeah, having to be aware of like where both wheels are and what the text, like ground is and all the bumps and everything. Can you get more um, off-road wheelchair? Could you get ones with suspension and big tires that you can just roll over sand and stuff on? Absolutely, but you have to think about what your lifestyle is like. If you're only going off-road or only going to the beach 5% of the time, yeah. then having big, heavy tires and suspension might not make a lot of sense. Especially if you're driving, because you have to load it in and out of your car all the time, everywhere you go. Yeah. And if you're constantly doing that, you know, you're just putting strain on your body. All right, so we're coming up on a pretty big obstacle that I oh, am okay. kind of worried for you, I'm not gonna lie. I think once I get to the top and start wheeling down, I need to lean back but also be aware not to fall back. Okay, I did it. Woo! My arms are already kind of getting a little bit tired. Well, my, it's my grip as well, like my grip for my thumb, yeah. Yeah, if, I, if I'm seeing bits in this, whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go, see? Whoa. So that's what I meant, whenever you see stuff like this, you kind of have to lean back and expect that your front wheels will get caught and it'll throw you forward. Wow, it just swiveled me on that one. Because your front, because your front, front, it was front only your front left that got caught, yeah. Okay. Like I'm pretty sure this busy road up here, whatever this road is, there's no cutouts anywhere, but we'll go check and yeah. we might have to honestly take like a huge detour in order to avoid hurting ourselves or falling out of the chair. Yeah. yeah. What I like to do is I'll kick up into a wheelie yeah. and come up close to the edge as I can in one motion and just drop down. Wow. And then just keep going. I didn't start doing this until a couple years after my injury. Like, oh, wow. you, you've been in it for less than an hour. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. You'll, Let's... Cr you'll crack your head for sure. Okay. 
looking at where the little bumps are in the sidewalk is just something I don't do when I'm walking. Like, I'll look out for big obstacles, but not, yeah. like, I wouldn't care about little cracks and stuff. Well, because it doesn't affect you. Like, it doesn't, you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't need to look for something because it doesn't affect you, then why would you need to look for it? Yeah. So here's the example that I was talking about. No curb cuts on any of the corners except for one over there, sorta. So let's keep headed, keep heading that way, and hope, yeah. hopefully we find a light or a crosswalk or something that has some access okay. for us to get across. So we'll just keep our eyes open for, for an option. We could get off and then go up to that street by pushing in the road, but that? that's a good way to get hit by a car, and we're not trying to get hit. So. Okay, so keep going until there's a. Until we can find a way to get off and on. I think that's the best way. I guess you're very used to how visible you are. Like from I mean, I'm not only used to how visible I am, I'm really confident in my skills. Yeah. I know what I can and can't do. And, and you know, that's something that can be really hard for new wheelchair users when they go out in life is they're they're terrified. I mean, think about where you're at right now. You're fully able-bodied and you're thinking, oh, I'm already thinking about falling. I'm already thinking about cracks. I'm already thinking yeah. about busting my thumbs. Sometimes that keeps people inside for a very long time because they're just constantly terrified. Yeah. Like, what, and people, I would what, say, what are people gonna think of me? What if I fall out? What if I get hurt, you know? And I would say my appetite for risk is higher than most people's anyway, so I think that would help me. But if I was more cautious as a person, mm -hmm. yeah, I can definitely see something like this. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's width in the sidewalk. I feel like I'm gonna have um, blisters. some blisters, yeah. A lot of the times people are in the way or don't even notice they're in the way. So I've learned how to be what I call aggressively kind. So I'll say, excuse me, pardon me in an aggressive manner, but I'll say it with a smile and say thank you. Excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me. Versus the kind of like, um, could you um, just like, hey, you know, like no yeah. one notices if you're tiny and meek. Yeah. Um, occasionally if people are like in a, a, a concert or a festival situation where everyone's around talking, maybe drinking, they don't know what's going on, I'll put a hand on them and if yeah. they still don't notice, I'll start tapping. Yeah. And they'll be like, who's the, who's the, oh, oh my, but you know, and then, yeah, then yeah. they notice. Okay. But yeah, I always start with what I call aggressively kind and then move forward from there. So let's go hit these crosswalks and yeah. keep going. Yeah, okay. I let my wheels go then and I was like, uh oh. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, <laughs> fell. Okay, first of all, more than likely strangers are gonna try to help you, but let's hope they don't. Okay. Alright, in this situation, I was trying to I lean would back. Say, I would I say, I would say un unbuckle your seatbelt yeah. and get yourself out of the chair and sit on the ground. And I'm trying to pull, I'm trying not to use my legs, right? Yeah, but you can drag them along. Okay. Alright, so grab grab your chair and set it up beside you. Okay. Right, I'm let's... very aware right now that I'm a complete spectacle. Like, yeah. it hit me, I'm like, everybody is watching me. Like, just because you don't see people fall out wheelchairs that often. True. Lock your, your wheel locks. Yeah. You can use this hand to grab here, that one to grab uh, this this bit like this yeah and then kind of give yourself a dip to yeah get up towards the chair yeah and then go higher yeah I'm, and, I'm, I'm aware I'm putting a bit of weight on my legs but I'm trying that's, not that's to okay that's pretty decent transfer yeah, yeah, yeah. so that would work well for someone who's got a lot of upper body strength yeah um, there are some guys that don't have upper body strength I don't even know what happened there are we? the front wheel got caught so because you uh, came at it at a sideways angle it was only one wheel that touched the edge versus oh, two wheels. Okay. So because one wheel, it kind of it threw, almost felt like it slow motion. I was like, I'm <laughs> falling, I'm falling. It was like really slow. I was like, Whoa. All right, so let's go up this little incline right here okay. and see what happens. Do you sometimes look at a hill and think, I can't do that? Uh, I'll just say I'll go around it. Yeah. Um, something like this, not a big deal. One time. But we can you easily tell? You look at you like. That's too much effort, that's gonna kill me. Can't get up there. Well, I mean, sometimes I just don't have options. Like, yeah. I have to get from point A to point B. I could call it Uber and load up in an Uber, have an Uber take me to the hop top of the hill. I could ask a stranger to push me. Like, have um, you ever been to San Francisco? Like, I'm sure no, I've some never, of the hills I've, in San Francisco. I've never had a desire to go to San Francisco be, specifically for that reason. Yeah, it'd be impossible. Yeah. This is a good little workout. No, what, no wonder you're, uh, you're so built. <laughs> I think that's also partially due to uh, hitting the gym. Okay. Hitting the gym, yeah. yeah. But yeah, pushing around in a chair definitely works your shoulders and your triceps and your chest real well. Back up to the edge as far as you can go. Lean forward. Oh, I'm 100% going to fall backwards though. I don't know. Keep your hands low. Yeah. Drop and then pull. 
Huh. Oh, I did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, with all my experience, still rarely jump curbs. I don't like it. It's very hard to do that. So right? this is what we'll do. Although this is seriously not the best option, given the world of accessibility, we kind of right. have to do this. Is go in the road. Stay close to the curb. Oh, my arms. Oh, I hit my thumb again. Oh no, five seconds, four, three. Exactly, how what much time do I get? I think about a person who had a cane or a crutch, how in the world would they get it? Yeah, that's crazy. I'm getting, this thumb's gonna, this this thumb's gonna start bleeding soon. Push. Oh, there you go. Cool. Uh, we made it here. That's the we, we got here. It's, it felt like the whole time I was like problem solving. I'm like, okay, a lot of my attention was on the detail of where we're going, and then I just generally feel like pretty tired. My hands are sore just from pushing that whole way. Felt like a long trek. Yeah, and it was what maybe a mile or two. Yeah, maybe. maybe a mile. Yeah, and something you mentioned is, is problem solving. Yeah, that's something that I, it, it as a wheelchair user becomes an asset because you get used to high level automatic problem solving. Yeah. There's a lot of discrimination like in the job force, for example, yeah. where they don't see a value, they see they see a liability and not an asset, but the truth is more than likely, a, a person with a disability or a wheelchair user could come into a company and see all the problems very quickly because mm. we're trained. All day long. All day long. So what has been um, your experience with noticing how people notice you? I definitely feel like people are looking or just like, there's almost that nervous energy of people are like, what's going on? Like, and they don't want to make a big deal of it, but they're also, you can just see people are looking like, and then when I fell out, that's when I realized every single car waiting in traffic, everyone around is eyes are glued to me. Like I can, I can always put myself in their position. Like exactly. You know, there's, there's definitely this constant, awareness of knowing that people are aware of you. Yeah. You said the nervous energy where, yeah. where people are going, I have to act as if I don't notice this, notice this person, but I definitely notice this person. Yeah, 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 like yeah. you know in their head they're going act normal, act normal, act normal, act yeah, normal, yeah. but they start acting weird because they're trying so hard to act normal. Yeah, you yeah. know, um, and the side eyes, you get a lot of yeah. side eyes, you feel. And it just goes quiet. So they might even be like, like mid conversation it, and then it just goes quiet as they walk past. Like, yeah, yeah, they'll be in mid jovial conversation conversation but they are so distracted by your presence they will stop what they're doing yeah. in order to not be weird about it and to not pay attention or whatever. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. Alright now we're getting Louie out of the chair we gotta untape him. Nice. Oh yeah. The freedom. Oh, oh yeah. Gotta get your seat seatbelt out of there. Stand up and stretch. Oh, feels good, man. Wow, that's weird. Like even just for that short hour or so, that or yeah. however long we were. That's yeah. That was a really unique experience. So overall, Louis, what's your experience been? I think even in this short hour or two, there were so many things I just haven't been aware of, like the little cracks in the sidewalk and just being hyper aware and problem solving the whole time, just being in that frame of mind. And then also just so many things I don't realize, like just being at that height, you just see the world from a different perspective or you notice people staring a lot more or suddenly I was like starting to look at, oh, how, how would I be able to get into that store? Or the fact that we had to go all the way around to find a little dip in the road to get through. I've become aware of a lot more than I was even earlier today, do you know what I mean? Just, the, just being in that, in the chair and experiencing some of what it feels like to struggle with those accessibility things. Is yeah, and it's, it's an interesting, unique thing that I actually get to share this with you a little mm. bit because I, I believe other marginalized groups don't have that opportunity. Yeah. Like you can't simulate being gay for a day. Yeah. Right? You can't simulate being trans for a day. Yeah. That's not yeah. something you can simulate. Yeah. Um, but we can definitely simulate this by putting you in a chair that's very yeah. similar to the kind of chair, navigating the same kind of things that I navigate, experiencing some of the, the different things However, other things you, you, I wouldn't hope for you to be able to experience. I would not want you to have to experience, you know, the pain or the, you know, bowel and bladder management problems. And, and guys, if you want a bit more of a background on Richard's story, um, 
go over to his channel obviously and check after but just to reiterate what I've experienced today isn't like I know exactly what it is to be disabled or a wheelchair user but you're saying like there's these other very prominent parts of it and with, where it comes to nerve damage everything below the level of injury is impaired right and depending on where your level of injury is different things are impaired mine's pretty low so I still have like my abdomen um, I still have the ability to have abs there's some guys that are a bit higher that don't even have their abs and and their bodies work differently these injuries are like fingerprints they're all called spinal cord injuries but they're all extremely different in the same way that fingerprints are the same yet different yeah. however there are some universal things in the spinal cord injury community. One being um, our bladder starts working. We don't know when it's full, we can't empty it on our own, we've got to use catheters to do that. Um, and that involves a bunch of other secondary complications such as urinary tract infections, um, everything from the cost of those medical supplies. Um, same thing with our, our bowel system. It's damaged, we don't know when we have to go, we don't know when it's full, so sometimes we can have accidents. Um, there's also the complication of nerve pain. So our brain is constantly receiving a panic signal from our our level of injury screaming hey there's a problem down here it's kind of a cruel irony because there's a lot of things we can't feel below our level of injury but the one thing we can feel is pain you know temperature sensation gone so you could easily burn yourself if something fell on your lap or absolutely soft touch is gone hard touch is gone plus everything else uniquely that each individual person has to deal with plus how we interact with society plus you know like it just it's this constant never-ending like all these extra layered things and that can spiral people into addiction and to depression and even wanting to kill themselves you know I, I have that as a big part of my story your entire future gets taken from you in a moment and and usually what keeps people waking up in the morning is having a compelling future to go towards and you have to figure out how to relive an entire life from the ground up. Following off the back of that then, so if if somebody watching has had, I guess there's, there's two sides to this, Yeah. somebody that's personally had some kind of injury that's massively shifted what they're able to do now, like maybe their whole future dreams uh, they can't do now, what is your advice for them in terms of like maybe there's people watching that are just in the lowest depression that feel their life's been destroyed and then the other thing is what would your advice be for people in in their lives that are watching that's like yeah that's happened to somebody I know one of my friends what what is your advice for both those two people if you're a person who's in a predicament where your your life has completely changed um, whether it was uh, gradual or if it was something that happened very quick you have to rebuild a new compelling future um, and that's not an easy task um, but I think you have to do something every day even if it's little that makes you a better person um, I know for me one of the most basic things I started doing was making my bed every day so by waking up and having a task to complete make the bed also helped me from getting back into the bed so then I would just kind of keep that forward momentum going then the next day I'd say okay now every day I'm making my bed every day I'm going to make sure I wake up at the same time or I'm gonna eat something healthy every single time you know you have to dig yourself out of the hole but there's no way you're just gonna jump and leap out of it I think you have to have patience you have to be consistent you have to realize that there's gonna be ups and downs along the way but you have to have desperation and I think desperation can sometimes be a gift because when you're desperate you're willing to do anything to get it you know I briefly mentioned about my story like I found myself living in a dingy dirty dark basement were you very isolated at extremely that point? isolated I don't think I interacted with people for months at a time um, just like tragically addicted to drugs super depressed I mean it was my bed that was covered in blood and pee and poop and trash all around me and I was just ready to die and oh, oh I mean I had a, a, a tragic mental breakdown that even got me institutionalized in the psych ward and and when I finally got like cleaned off the drugs and I was finally around people I was like oh what whoa like yeah. what is this like how did I get so bad like what you know it just like it just blew me away and then you know it was one of the hardest things I think even harder than dealing with the disability was overcoming depression and addiction and and the way I did that was just like little by little I mean I'm kid you not like a minute at a time I'm like can I last one minute 
and then I would. And then it turned into, can I last five minutes? Can I last 10 minutes? Can I last 15? Can I last an hour? Can I last a day? Can I just make it till tomorrow? And just like, just getting getting yourself out little by little by little by little by little, I think is the way to go when it comes to the transitioning out of those things because the way I changed was, I changed, it's simple, you have to change everything about yourself. Yeah. But, so, uh, we but haven't, we haven't known each other long, but everything that you, everything who you are, that I know of knowing you for a short time, like you seem the opposite of all of that. Like confident, you're sure of yourself, you know who you are, you, you've got, you're sure of your identity, you know, just everything is, you're like oozing positivity and it feels amazing to even imagine that you've come from that dark place of despair to where you are now, super empowered, running a channel which is helping thousands of other people, do you know what I mean? I think it's, you, there's an amazing story there on yourself and hopefully people watching can get some hope from that, hearing from where you've come from. It's insane to even me too. Yeah. Like I have these moments where I'll like look in the mirror and start giggling laughing. Cause I'm like, I can't believe I'm here when I'm here, doing what I'm doing. Because like, I used to even watch like TV shows and movies and fantasize about how they were even able to live a normal life. And they were just characters in a show. I'd be like, how do they get up every morning? Like, how do they go do stuff? How do they have friends? Like, I was so baffled by just basic things. For me, it's the fight for independence and, and the way I can be where I'm at today is because I've got such gratitude for where I'm at today. I know what it's like on the other side and I'll do anything to make sure I never go back there. One of the amazing things that you did go through that and, and find your way out of it now is that you, the advice you give somebody that's in that place is way more powerful than the advice I could give them because they're like, you haven't been what I've been through and you can be, you can say, I have been there. I used to say that a lot when I was in my depths. Yeah. I'd say, you don't know what it's like. Yeah. And that would every time shut people up. Yeah. Because honestly, they didn't know what it's like. Yeah. No one can say that to me. Yeah. No one can sit, tell me, you don't know what it's like. He goes, yes I can. Yeah. You wanna hear a story? Let me tell you a story. Wow. So, go so that's more, way more powerful for you to speak to somebody and give them advice. Like, if I was in that place, you've got some kind of authority there to say, no, I d yeah, I do know, and you can you can get out of this, like, trust me. And that, uh, that's that's way better than someone just being like, oh, you know, cheer up, you know, but, you know, why don't you just be positive about it, you know, like, you can be like, no, these, these this is how you actually conquer this. Yeah, and to, to answer your, your, your next question is, how can a person help another person that's going through something? And I Especially that isolate themselves. I've been yeah. around friends who are in depression and they just don't want to spend any time together. And I'm like, should I force them to spend time with me? Should I just let them be? And then if someone's isolating, themse isolating themselves enough, you end up just not speaking to them because they're like, oh, they probably don't want to hang out. Like, I don't know how to always be there and support it, you know? So I think the only way that anyone could have ever helped me is if I wanted to be helped. Yeah, okay. I think a lot of people don't want to be helped. Um, I'll speak to that specifically around like the drug addiction side of things. So you can't make someone get clean. You can't support them into getting clean. They have to choose yeah. to get clean and they have to want to stay clean. You can help them through that, but if they haven't made that choice yet, you're running around like a crazy person driving yourself insane. Like you're not gonna be able to ever help someone get clean. And I think the same way is like, if someone is content with being depressed, if someone is okay with being unhappy, then you just kinda have to let them. Like they have to find their own way to at least start. You know, what are you more likely to do if you see a car broken down on the side of the road? If he's just sitting there with the hood up and the lights blinking, are you gonna pull over? Probably not. But if you see the guy behind the car pushing, even if the car's going nowhere, you might jump out and help him. You know, like, even for yourself, like, you can only help someone who wants to help themselves. Yeah. Even if they don't know how to help themselves, if at least they're trying to help themselves, that's how you can get in and help people. And then, when it comes to, like, making new friends or when you're, maybe the first interactions you have with people, do you find a lot of that conversation is centered around the fact that you're in a wheelchair? And do you, does that bother you? Because obviously you, you as a person are so much more than the fact that you're in a wheelchair. But I even found, if I'm talking to my friends, I'll describe you as like, oh, my friend in the wheelchair. But I'm like, I wish I didn't just have to describe you as that. Like there's so many other personality traits and achievements you've done, but it's kind of a shame that 
on the surface that's like that's like the first impression someone has. Absolutely. And that's the box you're sometimes put in maybe. Um yeah it sucks but it's okay I think. Yeah. I mean you're the tall guy with the dreads, right? Yeah. So I mean it's the same same thing like when it comes to meeting a person with a disability, don't mention it. Let them bring it up. I do you find it annoying if someone the first question they ask is like, oh, why are you in a wheelchair? That, that, that I find really obnoxious. Yeah. Um, I do not like the hey, what happened to you question um, because that would me just be like walking up to you and be like, hey, tell me about your divorce. Hey, tell me about that time your kid died. Hey, tell me about that time you lost your, you know, like yeah. all this terrible stuff. It's like, no, don't bring that up. Don't mention yeah. it. Don't like wait a few weeks, wait a few months, get to know the person. It's like, I got a name. And you never know, it could, it could have been that someone was uh, born unable to walk or it could have been that there was a tragic accident and that's quite traumatic for them to talk about. Absolutely, so there's definitely a few people that I know that have had major traumas around the accident that were not just physical traumas, that were emotional traumas as well. To fulfill your curiosity forces us to relive these things, it's not really cool. This is literally a tool that gets us from point A to point B. Yes, it is a big part of our life. Yes, it affects a lot of us, but like just because our transportation device is so obvious doesn't mean that that has to always be the topic of conversation. This has been amazing, Richard. Thanks for taking me out, giving me this experience, opening my mind. And for those watching at home, if you are going through and relate to anything Richard's talked about or know anyone going through it, I really would encourage you to go over to, to his channel. And even if you don't know anyone going through it, I think it's an amazing window into uh, the world of uh, being a wheelchair user. So head over to his channel, check out the behind the scenes we filmed of today. There's some funny stuff that happened. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you soon. Peace.